Kopsoris Tillerson in Addis Ababa for official visit to Ethiopia. Ethiopia and UAE can to uplift bilateral ties in multifaceted areas. And Africa Factbook and Pan-African Research Project launched in Zimbabwe. Hello and welcome to ABC News. I'm Unde Menangada. President Dr. Mulato Tashoma and Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation of the United Arab Emirates, Sheikhi Abdullahi bin Zayed, conferred on bilateral relations of the two countries here in Addis Ababa on Wednesday. The two sides have expressed keenness to reinvigorate agreements signed so far mainly in trade and investment. There were also political consultations between Ethiopian President and the, U the UAE Minister. Currently, over 100 United Arab Emirates are engaged in various sectors, investing over 500 million USD. In a related story, Prime Minister Haile Mariam de Saling has conferred with United Arab Emirates Foreign and International Cooperation Minister Sheikhi Abdullahi bin Zayed won't stay here in Addis Ababa. The two sides deliberated on ways of, ways of hatening Ethiopia and the United Arab Emirates versatile cooperation focusing on tourism, trade and investment. They also underscored the need to collaborate on Middle East and Horn Africa peace and security efforts. Meanwhile, Sheikh Abdullahi bin Zayed expressed his appreciation for Haile Mariam's efforts in speeding up the collaboration between Ethiopia and the United Arab Emirates. Ethiopia and UAE agreed to boost bilateral ties in various aspects. The two nations' foreign affairs ministers have deliberated on common agendas at the second Joint Ministerial Commission meeting on Wednesday here in Addis. In his opening remark, Ethiopia's foreign affairs minister, Dr. Warkan Hagabeyo, underlined that the two countries' relations have been on a positive trajectory since its inception. Dr. Warkana indicated this can be enhanced further for the advantage of both nations. United Arab Emirates Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation Minister Sheikh Abdullahi bin Zayed also asserted his country's interest to further collaborate with Ethiopia on investment and trade. Ethiopia offers the right mix of opportunities for mutually beneficial partnership for investment. It commands a disciplined and affordable trained labor force, abundant natural resources, and the cheapest energy resource. It has made much improvement in putting in place attractive policies and physical initiatives to have competitive environment. This, I believe, will attract United Arab Emirates businesses to invest and do business in Ethiopia. We have discussed and agreed to further enhance our ties in terms of economy, politics and investment. We have witnessed the situation in Ethiopia as very attractive for investment and we are keen to work with Ethiopia. Ethiopia and the United Arab Emirates have also signed MOU on political consultation. The two sides also noted the need to cooperate on peace and security as well as in fighting terrorism. Moreover, the agreement they reached on labor exchange in January is believed to enhance both sides' economic advantage. Take a look at this clip. Our two countries are located in the region that, among others, faces challenges from security problems such as terrorism and the emergence of extremism elements. To this end, Ethiopia and the United Arab Emirates should create mechanisms that enable them both to work closely in dealing with emerging security threats in the region. The agreement on labor exchange is an indication of the positive trajectory of our cooperation. I believe this will increase the current trade volume, which is 500 million USD. The U.S. Secretary of State Rick Tillerson arrived in Addis Ababa Wednesday afternoon 
for an official visit to the country. Tillerson is expected to discuss with high-ranking government officials on bilateral and regional issues. The two countries are desirous to beef up their trade and investment partnership to a higher level. Ethiopia and U.S. are also close allies in peace and security matters in the Horn of Africa. Panoromo, ETV Afanotarat, Yotinu Ega. Television Conquat Grinia, Bukonquat, ETV, Akarabawa. Itiva Fitek, Afarafal, Dudurut, Niambala. Lukadaf Somaliga, in the Wanton, Lukadaha, ETV. English transmission on ETV language. Coming soon. Tarakabuna Baramija Lukar Arabia, Abrahanat and Lukar. Attendez-nous la France sur la chaîne ETV de Long prochainement. Welcome back. The Council of the Ethiopian People's Revolutionary Democratic Front, EPRDF, will elect its chairperson in the upcoming week, Office of the Council said. In his briefing to local journalists on Wednesday, EPRDF office head, Shafarash Gute said the council will meet to elect the chairperson following the conclusion of the executive committee's meeting scheduled for Sunday. During its deliberations, the executive committee will evaluate the implementation by the member parties of the decisions made during its last meeting. Addis Ababa Women's Association says it will maintain efforts of ensuring equality and fair benefits of women. The association has celebrated its 20th founding anniversary and Women's Day in collaboration with Addis Ababa and Ethiopian Women's Federation. Association's President Alma Sabraha has taken the occasion to urge all to contribute share to minimize women's vulnerability to abuse. The event also featured the great roles women play in sustaining the peace and stability of the country. Minister of Industry says it is utilizing partner support and experience to transform the agricultural industry. The second international agro-industry investment forum concluded on Wednesday. Participants have dubbed the forum important for experience sharing and broader market change. Kafla Yusab reports. A number of allies are showing keenness to cooperate with Ethiopia in the agricultural sector. Minister of Industry is eyeing this an ideal opportunity to beef up the country's agricultural industrialization. Industry State Minister Dr. Mabrato Mella says participants' engagement in the sector plays share in exchanging best experiences on top of financial contribution. We design a resource mobilization uh, task force which is led by the Ministry of uh, Finance and Economic Cooperation and uh, all uh, developmental partners within the country and outside of the country we are bringing them under this umbrella, under one plan. So given the respective capacity of every uh, actor, now we have you know, this uh, joint plan. So optimizing resource uh, is very important and uh, I think uh, we are on a good track. The ministry is also exerting effort to combine national resources and modernize the sector. Even though we secure the finance, we don't have the capacity to implement it. So we want also to link the regional and the regions, we have universities, we have technical and vocational training centers, research centers. So we have joint plans with them also to support the the second international agro-industry investment forum Ethiopia has been hosting has come to a close. Participants say such kinds of expos create a platform to build experience and market chains. I see a program 
Our participation at the expo has benefited us in many ways. It has helped us build connection with foreign companies. That means we can easily promote our products abroad and have more customers. The expo was also significant to exchange experience with fellow local companies. There is huge population here and we have fruit and other food resources abundantly in the country. So I can say anyone engaged in the sector could be benefited. By participating here, we are discussing issues in the sector, building contacts and expanding our market opportunities. Presently, various agro-industrial parks are under construction across different parts of the country. That was Kufle Yusuf Sabeb reporting. Ethiopian Railway Corporation says local capacity building activities are well underway to take up future projects by its own expertise. As part of the move, the corporation is also building a National Railway Facilities Maintenance Center at Kombolcha town of Amhara State. Daniel Kasaun has more on that. Aiming to accelerate its rapidly growing economy, Ethiopia is engaged in building huge infrastructural projects including railways. So far, Chinese and Turkish companies take the lion's share in constructing Ethiopian railway facilities. Now, trainings are underway to take future Ethiopian railway projects by local capacity. railway electrical part. We have taken railway electrical engineering at master's level. We are applying the theoretical knowledge here in building this railway. The education has enabled us to update ourselves in current technologies. The commencement of railway engineering education in Ethiopia helps us conduct future railway projects by local capacity. For this railway project, the government is paying billions of dollars to foreign companies. If we could fully own the project by our capacities, we would be benefiting more. We have, of course, a plan of taking up future railway projects by ourselves. Intended to save foreign currency, Ethiopia is also building railway facilities maintenance center at Kombolcha town in the Amhara state. Projects like Awash Waldia Haragabe Railway are playing a crucial role in knowledge transfer along with creating job opportunities. The project creates a huge number of jobs in both construction and post-construction phases. When the project starts operation, there will be many employees working at every station. As I have had the experience here, I will get employed in similar projects when this one is completed. Out of the 8,000 employees working at our Shwoldia Haragabe railway project, over 5,000 are Ethiopians. The World Bank approved a $375 million International Development Association credit to support Ethiopia's goal of achieving universal electricity access by 2025. According to a press release of the World Bank, Ethiopia has the second highest available generation capacity in sub-Saharan Africa with nearly 100% coming from renewable energy as vast as, as well as untapped solar, wind and geothermal clean energy resources. Over the past decade, the government has launched one of the most successful electrification programs in sub-Saharan Africa, expanding the grid network coverage to nearly 60% of towns and villages. Ethiopia is also working to provide all citizens with access to electricity and the support is aimed at speeding this up. Ethiopian communities living in Dubai have celebrated Ethiopian Day. The, cele the celebration is aimed at boosting Ethiopians' participation in their country's affairs and supporting each other. Abraham Asrat has more. On Ethiopian Day, compatriots residing in Dubai and its environs come together and update themselves on the affairs of their country, enjoying their country's unique tradition of food and dances. This time, the celebration is started by singing the national anthem of Ethiopia. The celebration also featured soccer tournament, fashion show, trade fairs and bazaars. Yes, 
On this day, we come together and support each other. This can help us further strengthen our culture and preserve our history. I would like to urge the Ethiopian community living in and around Dubai to reverse our negative image, which is associated with poverty, which also is the main reason for Ethiopians to leave their country. Participants say the event has become a venue for them to discuss their common challenges outside their country. We don't dwell on migration and reminisce to be homesick. We rather recount that we are living with our fellow countrymen and women. It is good to show what Ethiopia has to the other citizens living here. It is also a platform for us to help each other discussing our issues. The celebration has been held colorfully for the sixth time with Ethiopians dressed in their traditional clothes. Ethiopian Day in Dubai, telling the African story by Africans for Africans. That's the objective of the Africa Factbook and Ambitious Pan-African Research Project launched in Harare on Monday. Kfleyus Sabebe has more from CGTN. For far too long, Africa's story has been told by non-Africans, who in some cases have no real interest in projecting a strong Africa. Addressing that is the motive behind Africa Factbook, which seeks to be the first edition of its kind, composed of locally generated information on in and about the continent. There is an ongoing global war of information, a battle of the minds of the people, and Africa has to offer something about Africa. Uh, we, we, we complain a lot that uh, these ones are saying uh, bad things or incorrect things about Africa, but what have you been doing? The African Union, which endorsed the Factbook at the summit in Kigali in 2016, is jointly implementing the project. It believes availing previously scant data about Africa will inform appropriate policy formulation and help bridge a knowledge gap that has retarded the continent's development. The Africa Factbook is the epitome of change in Africa. It is about new data collection and a new narrative that reflects Africa's diversity. The Africa Factbook will make it possible for Africans to tell a new narrative about Africa. Africa is transforming. A team of 200 researchers is being assembled to produce the first edition of Factbook by January 2019, and it is expected to be a game changer. The Africa Factbook aims to be as frequently consulted as other popular sources like Google. Young people these days just go on the Google. Why not go on the Africa Factbook in the next year or two? Five years from now, the Africa Factbook will be the most used reference book on anything African. Once out, the Africa Factbook is expected to create a link between the continent's rich history as well as its rapidly evolving present and bright future. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.